Today I wanted to talk about the Indian shovel nose catfish, Spirata aur, supposedly, maybe Achicularis. They're very hard to tell apart. But I bought it from Raymond Chan, an amazing fish which doesn't exist anymore. But um, back then he was bringing in cool animals like this. I think in 2015, I want to say 2016. So we bought three Spirata Hour nominally from Raymond. We adopted out two of them because they're hard to house with other fish, especially other catfish. They're not horrible to everybody, but they're selective in who they dislike. They certainly dislike other Bagri Day catfish of the Bagrid family but they also take offense to other fish or catfish that's unpredictable <clears throat> like this guy didn't like our piraiba or any piraiba housed ever housed with him he also doesn't like the Perun sharks gives him a chase and I've never seen him squabble with red tails or hybrids or uh, lyrii or jowl anyhow this guy is the only one that we've, we've re retained from that three batch and that makes him uh, so probably about eight years old three feet long in the wild, they they grow to about five feet. It's it's stated. So he's a long way from champion size. I don't know if you caught it. He, he just gave a small uh, a quick chase to the to sexy the Dicichero sex Autumn. He doesn't like him much either. <laughs> but sexy is brazen, so he can easily earn anybody's displeasure when they were housed together growing up from about I want to say four or five inches in a 240 they've been okay together until about a foot or so maybe 10 inches and then they started bothering each other and I had to put them in a 4,500 gallon, all three of them, and they continued having their hierarchy disputes there as well. So as I said, eventually we adopted out two of them and left the biggest guy to ourselves. They were all pretty, pretty similar size, I wouldn't say that there were significant discrepancies in the sizes. But this guy had to go into this tank, I, I think even before they adopted the other two. They adopted two, lived in the other 4500 gallon for a while. Because this guy was giving them a lot of trouble. He was the alpha of the three. Or she, I don't know, it's probably here. They're about average growth rate kind of catfish about one one and a half foot in the first year in the second probably close to two feet and then slower from there his nickname is Indian of course because <laughs> he's an Indian shovel nose and um, Indian thinks he's the boss of this tank. The real boss is Zhao, the hero of our yesterday's video. Indian wants to claim most of the bottom to himself and some of the mid column. And he chases away 
as I said, baron sharks and desichuros sometimes, sometimes paku even. But he never bothers red tails and others on the bottom. So I, I don't know what to make of it, whether he thinks they're not worth it, or whether he thinks they're too different. Hard to say. He's been through some uh, rough times. Uh, once, well, actually, at least once, or only once, he's been pretty badly chewed up by the hungry Peruns. Peruns may be skittish, but when they're hungry, they're highly predatory. So they stop caring who is who and attack whoever they decide is the smallest or the most, the highest chance of being eaten. So uh, I think two years ago, three years ago, right on the cusp of the spawning season, the Peruns attacked him uh, repeatedly. So he took out most of his dorsal, a lot of his tail, a lot of the skin was missing on the dorsal side. So Indian was separated into the 240 gallon for several months until he grew everything back. And then I, and then we put him back here again, and made sh and make sure that uh, made sure that we feed the Peruns much better, so they don't attack anybody again out of hunger. But then as long, I mean, we've had in uh, the, uh, Indian here with the big piraiba, with a five foot pira Suriname piraiba for a long time in this thing, many years. And you really dislike Piraiba. I mean, everything's relative, but he didn't like Piraiba, and every time, almost every time, they would bump into each other. He would give the Piraiba a nudge or a, a short chase, or take a fin, Piraiba's fin in his mouth, sometimes tatter it. So I've been tolerating it for about three or four years, and then I said, that's enough. So the Indian went into the 300 gallon quarantine for almost a year or so. Until unfortunately we lost our big Piraiba to the thiaminase again, to the B1 deficiency. So there was no point anymore to keep the Indian away from here, so he was put back here again. And since his main target, target Piraibo, has been had, had been gone, he decided to go after the. It freed his time and energy, and attention to go after other catfish in here, like the Peruns. They're not really a popular catfish or a fish in the hobby because they're go huge. They grow huge. They're aggressive, semi-aggressive. They're drab colored. There's nothing really much to them. They do have very nice body symmetry to my eye. Elegant and graceful. See, he's he's again chasing sexy. A short chase and sexy runs away but then he you know comes back a little higher and right now he just gave a short indication to that smaller Perun that he doesn't like him. The Peruns know it too so they they almost have I rarely have a need to go down to the bottom section of the of the water column anyway so they keep to the mid and upper levels and therefore they intersect with the with the Indian not that often. Again his his chasing or, or uh, dominance is not usually violent, it's usually more of a mild indication that you're in my territory and I don't like it. 
But if the target fish doesn't understand this or doesn't budge, he, he would proceed to up his game and get a little bit more violent if he has to. Funny enough that this fish used to take fish fish pieces when it was growing in, into, in the 240 gallon along with pellets but ever since I put it in this 4500 gallon uh, at about a foot and a half or so which was many years ago, like five years ago four or five years ago, I'm pretty sure it was like four, five years ago he stopped taking any, any fish or any nothing ever I even tried to starve him uh, for a long time in the quarantine when he had to spend time away from the Piraiba he wouldn't budge, he wouldn't take he wouldn't consider any fish, frozen fish as food he only wants his pellets, that's it and he's ready to go real thin and fast a long time or maybe even die before caving to take a, take a fish which is strange because in the wild they're predatory but of course, <clears throat> I've never tested that. I've never given them live fish to see what it would do. We don't feed live here. <clears throat> so that's about it, about the story on the catfish. I think he's the alpha in this tank, but he's, he's not. <laughs> He's a bit too slender and too elegant, built to really take the alpha spot in this tank, in this tank. They have a lovely uh, tail shape with the upper lobe much longer than the bottom lobe, but somebody beat his upper lobe I want to say about two months ago so he's growing his uh, tail back or that portion that was beaten off it wasn't really beaten off it was just attacked and was broken and then it just fell off I think at some point so that's not that's not a normal tail shape on that fish it's asymmetric with the upper lobe greatly Um, enlarged versus the bottom lobe of the tail and again the the shape of the dorsal is messed up his main leading dorsal uh, spine never grew back I mean it kind of healed with a with a kink in the middle so his beautiful dorsal is not I mean it's it's a beautiful sail like triangle in the normal healthy fish I mean the fish that has never had its dorsal damaged usually he swims, swims the laps around the tank around the bottom every now and then to, to sort of check on his territory but right now he's mostly sitting in the current he likes that too sitting in the car and coming out of those four pipes. And tasting the water for... for whatever new smells it brings to him. I've never actually seen him squabble with, with, uh, with the Jiao, with the boss. But when Zhao gets angry, everybody just stays out of his way, including the Indians. So that's suffice to say that he's not the boss. <laughs>